Hello everybody, John Grimsmo here, and in this episode of Open Kern Surgery, we are replacing the spindle. Fun! So after three years of ownership, um, basically I've crashed it one too many times and it's been mostly fine, but that combined with running high RPM, up to 42,000 RPM, more than I need to, has reduced the life of the upper spindle bearing, causing it to overheat now at 40,000 RPM, 30,000 RPM, things like that. So it's got temperature sensors everywhere and it thermally controls everything and it tries to keep the chilling system, it's actually got a, a huge chilling system with a um, air conditioner basically that chills the fluid, keeps it at 20 degrees Celsius. If that upper bearing gets to 50 degrees Celsius, it hard cuts the machine and e stops it. And we started having that. So um, I was able to continue running it for the past few weeks by limiting the max RPM to 18,000 RPM. That gets the temperature like 38, 39, 40 degrees instead of hitting that cap of 50. But teen, Tina from Kern USA is arriving later today and she's going to pull out the spindle and install the new rebuilt one, uh, which costs many, many tens of thousands of dollars and the work. And also she's gonna do a uh, full machine maintenance and get everything tuned up and back to normal because we've been running it hard for three years and it's time. So we're running it until she comes in a couple hours. Um, the guys have done a really good job about cleaning up the area and getting it all ready. We've got these carts ready with all of her tools and spare parts that they sent in. Um, it came with extra way covers and uh, ball screws for XYZ axis as well, just in case they need to be replaced. Um, they are really good about preventative maintenance. So when they send a Servitech, they send everything that could need to be replaced with that service tech so that if the machine measures a little sloppy or something, they have the spare parts to replace it. Um, if it's fine, then we ship them back, don't pay for them, everything's good to go. So, yeah. So, Tina just arrived, about 10 minutes of pleasantries, like nice watch, this is our shop, cool stuff. Uh, she's already in full service uniform and she's like right to work, super professional. So, let's say hi to Tina. Hi, Tina. Hello. And work to do. Oh yeah, she's got work to do. Okay, we'll leave her alone. Okay, so the spindle is already ready to come out. She said one bolt left. I'm gonna sit here and catch. She's gonna go on top and feed the cables down. And uh, ugh. no pressure. Okay, we're up. Well, the spindle is out. So all of these, some of them are air lines, some of them are oil lines, some of them are hydraulic lines, sensors, cables, power, so much is happening in this spindle. Actually, if you remember last year when I took out the Willimon spindle, let's put a little video up of that. So this right here is the spindle housing. It's heavy, but it's not that heavy. I thought it would be a lot worse. Um, so your tool would go here. This is your spindle, your cutting tool, your drill bit, your end mill, whatever. Coolant goes there. And uh, it's kind of sweet how this whole thing comes out. It's the exact same thing, just smaller. But it was similarly complicated. Sweet, so a little bit of mess on the ground here. We'll clean that up before we track it around the whole shop. But otherwise, it's out. <laughs> that's so weird. So in like an hour and a half since arriving, the spindle is out. Tina is an absolute beast. 
this is very interesting. Right before Tina was about to take out the spindle, she had to disconnect the air from it. The machine was off and she noticed that uh, air was still coming out one of the airlines. And she goes, huh, that's funny. And she told me, and I said, no problem, just turn the air off at the wall, you'll be good to go. And she goes, no, no, you don't understand. Like, this is wrong. This is not supposed to be like this. Something is wrong. And it turns out that this solenoid valve right here, which supplies air to the machine when the machine is turned on, was sticking and was being weird. And her concern was that if ever the machine is turned off with that sticking valve, then air is constantly flowing through the bearings of the spindle without oil also flowing to those bearings, possibly drying out the bearings. Um, so we talked a lot about it, we thought a lot about it, and I said, for one thing, the machine never turns off, like off, off, and it is almost always running all week anyway. So the likelihood of that causing the bearing failure is very, very low. Um, but anyway, she replaced that valve and we're all good to go again. But the lesson learned there is that don't just solve the problem. Don't just jump to conclusions and be like, no problem, got it. Uh, if something smells fishy, then try to understand what it is. And you know, manufacturing is very linear. It's very like, like everything has a reason. Everything does what it's supposed to do. If, if it's being weird, it's because you don't understand why it's being weird yet. So start digging. It's not super straightforward, most people don't define, so usually just using the paper cleaner that goes in there and wipe yeah. it down a little bit, yeah. it's usually good enough. In general, I would rather have less stuff in the spindle than more stuff, like yeah. chips and all Make that. Make it simpler, disposable. Yeah. Also, one of those points, I try to have a home with every customer that when they use the air gun or something, the machine, oh yeah. Always have something in the spindle. Just like put a tool right in there, something. I don't want the chips yeah. in there because that's gonna give you. Yeah, even with collets, try and never have an inside yeah. open. So Pierre was poking at this little bit of uh, residue in there, and of course he took it over to the microscope. Let's see it again. So it's like this waxy buildup with chips in it, obviously. Cool. Okay, old spindle, new spindle. So you can see what we have to transfer over. All these plugs and fittings and all that stuff. It comes with new power cables, but all that stuff has to be switched. And they have this protective ring, which is very smart. Noise. Comes shipped in its own wooden crate with like foam and rigid bolts to clamp. It was it was pretty in there. This thing could take a tumble and it would still be fine. But when this spindle is many tens of thousands of dollars, many, uh, you gotta protect it. She is a professional. I trust her. <laughs> So apparently when you put on new fittings on the spindle, the hexagonal part of the fitting, the you know, the pointy bit, sticks out past the diameter, the outside diameter of the spindle. So it the corner of it has to be filed on after it's torqued down. Otherwise the spindle will not fit into the housing. That's crazy. But just a little bit, not very much. The new spindle has been plumbed up and it is ready to go in. So I've got my muscle there. Tina's up on top ready. So the cables snake up. She's got this strapping she's gonna pull all the cables with. Perfect. It's a very tight fit to actually get the spindle down and out and then now we gotta go in and up. So we're gonna do our best here. through every little aspect of the machine gets us to look at tiny little details that bug us but we don't think about too much. Like when we close the door and latch it, usually we would have to like give it a push um, to get it to click into place properly. And there's a rubber bumper up here and a rubber bumper down here. So the upper bumper looks fine. 
but the lower bumper looks swollen and it's like a gummy bear. It's like really soft. Um, so this one's actually longer, causing, preventing the door from really closing properly. Uh, but we figured out that there are two washers behind this. If I just unscrew it, there's two washers built in. So on the lower one that's longer, I removed one washer and uh, it works great. Now the door closes without that extra little like push effort. Now it just latches properly. I like it. Next up is to calibrate the uh, XY of the probe tip in that ring gauge. And that's the last thing, I think. In the results page, it tells us the difference. Uh, length hasn't changed because I didn't do length calibration, but new calibrated offset, so it moved by a tenth. It moved by two tenths in offset one, probably X, offset two is probably Y. Um, that is both with the new spindle and also just it's been a while since I've calibrated it. Right now we're inspecting the Z bellow just to see how good condition it's still in looking for holes, all these chips accumulate in here, which, you know, sandwiches and can cut it over time. Uh, it looks good though. Very oily. Yeah, they soak with oil over time, so. Should probably clean them a bit more often than we do. Okay. We did end up replacing, this is the old X-axis ball screw. This is what, you know, there's a servo motor here that turns this, which moves the axis side to side. And Tina used the built-in oscilloscope function. That's what the X, the old X-axis looked like. Now show me Y and Z. So that's Y and that's Z. They're perfect. A couple tiny little spikes, but nothing to worry about. Go back to X. So she was able to see that something's wrong with X. Don't know what. It could be, uh, it could be the bearing block. It could be worn out in the middle, because we were saying that we do all of our machining in this little area. You know, the table's always tilted. Almost everything happens there, so it's not unheard of that the machine's just wearing out right there for whatever reason. And then show me the um, after the new X-axis screw, and it looks just like the other two. So I think we're back in business. And clearly the machine is running, so we're good. So just like back when Eric and I used to uh, take cars apart and put them back together, you gotta test carefully, you gotta go for a test drive, you gotta make sure that everything's plugged back in and you're not leaking coolant all over the road. Um, same thing here, so triple check that all of our hoses up top were tight, um, the through spindle coolant doesn't leak anywhere and just let it, let it run. So we've been running it all morning and everything is good. So yeah. Well, Tina, thank you so much for You're everything. You're welcome. And uh, you did a great job. Thank you. Happy to have my baby back. <laughs> for Tina. Because look at that, she's cleaning up after herself. Cleaning up all the greasy fingerprints. We also gave her some sagas. So that wraps up the spindle replacement and Kern maintenance video. We have the old spindle here, which is now Kern, Kern Precision property, um, going back in that crate and getting shipped back to them. They're going to ship it to Germany. They're going to get it rebuilt. They're going to have it back in their inventory for the next customer that makes a mistake and needs it. Um, they usually keep a couple spindles in rotation so that they always have something available for the last minute customer like us. Um, but yeah, otherwise the machine's running, everything's good to go, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Remember, don't forget to subscribe so that I can catch up to Saunders in subscribers by the end of the year. We're doing this. I need you guys' help. Okay. I got parts to make, and actually I got a wedding to go to right now. So, later.